In the world of football, few stories are like that of Paul Ince. From the bustling streets of Ilford, London, to the hallowed turf of Old Trafford, Ince's journey is a compelling tale of overcoming adversity, shattering racial barriers, and etching his name in history. In today's video, he breaks the silence on what he thinks is the biggest problem in football. Born on October 21st, 1967 in Ilford, Paul Ince's journey into football began in the humble settings of his London neighbourhood. Growing up, Ince's life was steeped in football, his passion for the game evident from a very young age. It was in these early years, playing in local parks and school teams, that the seeds of his future success were sown. Football was not just a pastime for young Paul, it was a calling. His talent on the ball, combined with a fierce determination to succeed, set him apart from his teammates. Spotted at the tender age of 12 by West Ham's manager, John Lyle, Ince's footballing skills were undeniable. This recognition came during a period when West Ham, despite being in the second division, pulled off a stunning FA Cup final victory over Arsenal. It was a time of mixed fortunes for the club, but for Ince, it marked the beginning of an extraordinary journey. By the age of 14, Ince was signed as a trainee by West Ham, a move that solidified his path in football. Lyle was not just a manager to Ince, but a mentor, guiding him through challenging school times and eventually signing him as a YTS trainee upon leaving school in 1984. Ince's debut in English football came on the 30th of November 1986 against Newcastle United in the First Division, a moment that would mark the start of an illustrious career. The 1987-88 season saw Ince become a regular player for West Ham, showcasing a remarkable blend of pace, stamina, uncompromising tackling, and good passing ability. His powerful shot earned him England under-21 honours, adding to the youth caps he had already acquired. Ince was seen as the natural successor to the veteran Billy Bonds in West Ham's midfield, stepping into the role as Bonds retired at the end of the season. However, Ince's breakout into the first team came during a turbulent time for West Ham. Despite historical successes, including an FA Cup win in 1980 and a third-place league finish in 1986, the club struggled to maintain a challenge for major honours. Relegation loomed as the team finished 15th and 16th in the successive seasons following Ince's debut. The 1988 season was particularly eventful for Ince. Amidst West Ham's struggles, he captured national attention with two spectacular goals in a shocking 4-1 victory over the then-league champions Liverpool in the League Cup. His continued goal-scoring prowess and individual brilliance were highlights in a season that ultimately saw West Ham relegated, leading to manager John Lyle's departure after 15 years. This period of adversity did little to diminish Ince's rising star. His performances sparked interest from top-tier clubs, including Manchester United, setting the stage for the next chapter in his career. Paul Ince's transition to Manchester United in 1989 for a then-substantial fee of £1 million was as controversial as it was career-defining. The transfer intensified by an early photo of Ince donning a Manchester United kit published by the Daily Express, left West Ham fans feeling betrayed and marked the beginning of a tumultuous yet triumphant chapter in his career. Despite initial setbacks, including a failed medical, Ince's move to Manchester was finalised, setting the stage for his rise to prominence. At Manchester United, Ince quickly proved his worth, establishing himself as a formidable force in the midfield alongside legends like Brian Robson and Neil Webb. His debut season was marked by success, as United clinched the FA Cup, a victory sweetened by Ince's standout performance in the replay against Crystal Palace. This was just the beginning of Ince's trophy-laden journey with United, which saw him become the linchpin in a team that would dominate English football in the early 90s. Under Sir Alex Ferguson's stewardship, Ince's role evolved as United embarked on a period of unprecedented success. The departure of Robson paved the way for Ince to become United's midfield general, a role he thrived in, demonstrating his knack for crucial tackles, visionary passes and powerful shots. Despite not being prolific in front of goal, Ince's contributions were instrumental in United's achievements during this era, including their first Premier League title in the inaugural 1992-93 season and a historic double in 1993-94.
Ince's time at United, however, was not without its challenges. His relationship with Ferguson was complex, marked by moments of tension and disagreement. The nickname The Gouverneur epitomized Ince's self-assurance, but also underscored the friction with Ferguson, who insisted on being the sole authority figure at the club. This tension culminated in Ince's transfer to Inter Milan in 1995 for £7.5 million, a move that ended his impactful stint at United, but opened a new chapter in his career in Italian football. During his tenure at Manchester United, Ince's contribution to the club's success was undeniable. He left with an impressive haul of medals, including two Premier League titles, two FA Cups, and European success with the Cup Winners' Cup and Football League Cup. His departure marked the end of an era for United, but also highlighted Ferguson's ability to make tough decisions for the team's future, a testament to the high standards and expectations at the club. Ince's move into Italian football with Inter Milan marked a significant chapter in his career. Despite the club not contending for the Serie A title during his tenure, Ince became a vital player for the Nerazzurri, showcasing his talents in a challenging league. His second season was particularly notable, with Ince scoring six times and playing a crucial role in Inter's journey to the UEFA Cup final. Although they were defeated by Schalke 0-4 in a penalty shootout, Ince's performances solidified his reputation on the international stage. Despite being offered a contract extension, family considerations led him back to the Premier League, this time with Liverpool. Throughout his career, Paul Ince encountered racism, both as a player and as a pioneering figure in football. Especially in Italy, the racism is super obvious, and to this day, players like Lukaku are being treated like shit. Ince's experiences with racism were emblematic of the challenges faced by black players during the 1980s and 1990s. Despite these obstacles, his response was one of resilience and excellence on the pitch. Ince's return to England with Liverpool was met with mixed reactions due to his past with Manchester United. Nevertheless, he made significant contributions on the pitch, including memorable goals in the Merseyside Derby and against Arsenal. Despite his efforts, Liverpool did not secure any major honours during his time, and tensions with manager Gerard Houllier eventually led to his departure. Ince's time at Liverpool was marked by his leadership on the field, though it was also a period of reflection on the professionalism needed within the squad. Moving to Middlesbrough reunited Ince with former teammate Brian Robson. His time at Boro was characterised by his typical combative style, though it also included disciplinary issues. Notably, Ince helped the team reach the FA Cup semi-finals, although a suspension prevented him from playing in that crucial match. After rejecting a contract extension due to the commute from his home, Ince left the club after contributing significantly over three seasons. Ince's career concluded with a significant stint at Wolverhampton Wanderers, where he again teamed up with a former Manchester United colleague, Dennis Irwin. In his first season, he played a key role in securing promotion to the Premier League. Despite the team's relegation the following season, Ince remained a pivotal player for Wolves, demonstrating his enduring quality and leadership. His departure from Wolves marked the end of his playing days, with Ince expressing a desire to return in a managerial capacity, showcasing his deep connection to the game and the clubs he represented. Paul Ince's journey with the England national team shows a career filled with historic milestones, passionate performances and memorable moments that underscore his importance to the team. Making his debut against Spain in Santander on September 9, 1992, Ince's introduction to international football was a challenging one, as England succumbed to a narrow one, zero defeat. However, this debut marked the beginning of a significant international career that would see Ince break new ground and leave a lasting impact on English football. Ince's landmark moment came during a tour of the US when he captained England for the first time on June 6, 1993, against the host nation, becoming the first black player to captain the senior England side. Despite the team's 2-0 loss, Ince's captaincy was a historic event, breaking racial barriers and setting a precedent in English football. Ince's prowess on the international stage was further highlighted when he scored his only international goals in a 7.
one thrashing of San Marino during the 1994 FIFA World Cup qualification campaign. These goals were a testament to Ince's ability to make significant contributions when it mattered most. Euro 96 saw Ince play a pivotal role in Terry Venable's England squad, serving as the midfield enforcer and Gasser's minder, tasked with creating space for Paul Gascoigne to weave his magic. Ince's performance in the group stage, particularly against the Netherlands, showcased his importance to the team, even as he missed the quarter-final against Spain due to suspension. The semi-final against Germany in the same tournament saw Ince return to the lineup, where he was part of an England team that played admirably, only to lose in a heart-wrenching penalty shootout. Ince's decision not to take a penalty before Southgate's miss attracted criticism, highlighting the immense pressure and scrutiny faced by players in such crucial moments. Being one of the first black players to captain the England national team, Ince broke significant racial barriers in a sport and a time when diversity was not as prevalent or celebrated as it is today. His achievements in this regard were not just personal victories, but also milestones for racial equality in football. Ince's international career also featured moments of bravery, notably in a crucial 1998 World Cup qualifier against Italy, where he played on despite suffering a deep cut to his head, his white shirt turning red with blood. This performance, which helped England qualify for the World Cup, became iconic, reminiscent of the bravery shown by Terry Butcher years before. Paul Ince's journey into management began after his playing career, marking a transition from a commanding presence on the pitch to a strategic and influential figure on the sidelines. His first foray into management was as a player coach at Swindon Town, where his signing was seen as a coup for the club, demonstrating his immediate impact and the respect he commanded within the game. However, citing the long commute from his home, Ince's time at Swindon was short-lived. Ince's managerial career took a significant turn when he took the helm at Macclesfield Town, inheriting a team languishing at the bottom of League Two. Demonstrating his ability to inspire and revive, Ince led a dramatic escape from relegation, earning him accolades and recognition for his managerial acumen. His success at Macclesfield laid the groundwork for his next challenge at Milton Keynes Dons, where he achieved notable success, including winning the Football League trophy and securing promotion to League One as champions. Ince's accomplishments at MK Dons paved the way for his historic appointment at Blackburn Rovers, making him the first black British manager in the Premier League. Despite a promising start, his tenure at Blackburn was marked by challenges, culminating in his dismissal after a series of poor results. This experience, however, did not deter him. Ince returned to MK Dons for a second spell, although with less success than his initial tenure. Further managerial stints followed at Notts County and Blackpool, the latter where he managed his son, Tom Ince. His time at Blackpool included a strong start to the season, but was marred by a stadium ban and subsequent departure from the club after a decline in form. In 2022, Ince took on the role of interim manager at Reading, stepping into a challenging situation. He managed to secure the team's safety in the championship, a feat that earned him a permanent managerial position. Despite his efforts, Ince was relieved of his duties in 2023 amid a challenging season for reading, highlighting the often unpredictable nature of football management.